All right, Green's brother Yao and Kiri, he just said some very powerful stuff a little while ago about aviation in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. If you can repeat and share. Well, um, aviation started in Ethiopia back in the, in the 1920s when the Emperor Haile Selassie, he was by the Red Sea, by the, a city called Aden, and he saw an air show, and the air show was put on by the British government. And then he was like the emperor that you just saw where he was buried at in the mausoleum. And the Emperor Menelik, he saw that technology should be applied to Ethiopia and technology should be, you know, utilized and taken advantage of Ethiopia. So Haile Selassie had influence with um, and was trained and, and was educated around Emperor Menelik. So he wanted to bring the same thing. So when he saw the airplane, he knew that Ethiopia didn't have a lot of roads, didn't have highways, and Ethiopia is very, very mountainous, a lot of terrera is mountain in Ethiopia so he thought the best way to get around is to do airplanes and have airplanes and fly airplanes mm -hmm. so during Italian invasion Haile Selassie wanted someone to come over to train Ethiopians how to fly and most people who knew how to fly were African Americans African Caribbeans so the first person he had to come over to teach Ethiopians how to fly his name was Colonel Hubert Julian and Hubert Julian Back in the day, they didn't teach black people how to fly. So Hubert Julian had to learn how to fly by watching people fly in airplanes. So imagine that. No formal training. You watch your airplane, so you get in an airplane, you think you can fly. That's a very, very difficult task. But he became known as um, Takur Nasir. And Takur Nasir is the black ego. So Hubert Julian, he was kind of pompous and he was kind of bravado. Actually, he came from the Marcus Garvey organization, the UNI and ACL. And I can't say if he was a formal member of the UNI and ACL, but he did do some training and you and I still had an aviation aspect too but what happened to Hubert Julian he came over here and the Emperor was getting ready to be crowned Emperor of Ethiopia in 1930 and then the Emperor was having a coronation and the Emperor says no one flies these airplanes and supposedly Hubert Julian he went up and flew the airplane some people say he wanted to impress the Ethiopian woman, which most people want to do. And some people said that he just wanted to impress the emperor. And, but he disregarded it and disobeyed a direct order from the emperor. So the emperor grounded him. And that's the worst thing to be a pilot is to be ground. They have two feet on the ground because we like pilots. We like to fly in the sky. So he grounded him and he made him the wuha, the water that you were drinking, come from Ambo. So he grounded Hubert Julian and he said that he needed to be commanded of ground troops. So then he was looking he for... Break the plane? Yeah, the, yeah, and, and Hubert Julian blamed, okay, what happened is Hubert Julian flew up in the plane and, and he crashed the plane, okay? And so that's why the emperor didn't want anybody to fly the planes because he didn't want them to crash the planes. So then he grounded them and then um, what happened after that is he was looking for an, another person to help fly and help teach his pilots how to fly. And our guide here, his name is Malaku, and there is a gentleman, his name was Malaku Bayan, and the emperor asked Malaku Bayan to research somebody else. And he wanted a black man to teach his pilots how to fly. They had Russians there, they had um, Germans there, they had British there, but he wanted his soldiers and his pilots to see somebody black, see somebody look like them, so then they're more apt to learn how to fly better because they see somebody who looks like them. So Malako Bayan, he researched newspapers and he saw that Colonel Robinson, his name was John Robinson at the time, he got trained at Tuskegee Institute and then he had to go up to Detroit, that's where he got his first airline flight and then he had to go to Chicago, Curtis Wright Aviation School, and that's where he learned how to fly. So to make a long story short, he became the Emperor's aviator. He flew the Emperor from fronts, fronts in um, in the Ogaden, fronts in Oxum, and then also he wanted to start an airline. So basically it's my understanding that the Emperor's son, Ross McConan, Prince McConan, and Colonel John Robinson came together and formed East Africa and Airways, the East African Indian Airways. So basically what I know Robinson did is he had training as a technician, he had training as a pilot, he had training to detail, he paid attention to detail and to quality. And he passed all of that on to Ethiopian Airlines. He trained the first batch of pilots for Ethiopian Airlines. And I think Captain Amayo, Alamayo Bebe were part of it and others. So what he did for sure is he passed his attention to detail, his diligence, his um, quality, attention to quality on to Ethiopian Airlines. And that's why Ethiopian Airlines is one of the best airlines lines in Africa really. So what we did as a nonprofit organization, we wanted to honor. Marcus Garvey said we need to honor our own saints, we need to canon our own leaders, and we need to honor our own people because the European is not you know required and not responsible for honoring our own people. So we 
I worked with uh, artist Nigel Benz, and we had a sculpture made and commissioned. Our organization commissioned a sculpture at Colonel Robinson. And we're lucky. Hmm? What organization? The Pan African Technical Association. And we're lucky that Ethiopian Airlines. Um, they respected us. So during the coronation of this and during the inauguration of this big facility here, they invited us to unveil our statue at the same time that they um, inaugurated this building. So February of 2016, they invited, I, I was over and they said I can speak. So I spoke at the luncheon that the CEO of Ethiopian Airlines, who agreed to name the airplane after Colonel Robinson, in addition to donating, uh, accepting the statue, they named one of the $250 million Boeing 787s after Colonel Robinson. And it's wonderful to see people who are flying and, and they're in other airplanes and they see this big airplane, Colonel Robinson. They ask, who is Colonel Robinson? Who is Colonel Robinson? So we're going to work. We have an agreement with Ethiopian Airlines to promote and broaden awareness of, of Colonel Robinson. So that's what we're going to do uh, a little bit more and see what we can do with respect to that. So I'm going to turn it over now to our guest and she's going to continue to Thank you so much for this detail. Yes, Sorry, that was I powerful. A lot of powerful history. But my part, just to give, name, my name is Zahar. I'm working for the Ethiopian Airlines. I used to work at the.